Hi, I'm Rob Kret, the director of the George O'Keeffe Museum, and we're here today at the George O'Keeffe Home and Studio in Abiquiu, New Mexico. I think coming to the Home and Studio in Abiquiu is essential for visitors because going to just the galleries in Santa Fe is part of the story, but it becomes complete when visitors have a chance to come and see where O'Keeffe lived. How she lived and where she lived I think is important uh, to understand her artwork as much as it is to understand her life. Coming to Abiquiu also gives you a little bit of insight into Georgia O'Keeffe. She chose to live here. She uh, selected this place uh, to live. The fact that she chose to live here in New Mexico in this particular location, the village of Abiquiu, uh, I think is also rewarding for our visitors to see. My full name is Agapita Judy Lopez, but Ms. O'Keefe and everyone else calls me Pita. I started working with Ms. O'Keefe in 1974. I had just turned 20, she had just turned 87. I started working with her as a companion. Ms. O'Keefe uh, had turned to an age where she didn't want to be in the house by herself with her two chows, so I was one of several girls that she hired at the time to stay with her at night and weekends when regular staff wasn't here. We got along well. Uh, we, we were kind of quiet people and, and seemed to work well. I was not an artist, so maybe that, that even worked in the factor. And I respected her. Uh, coming from a Hispanic background, I had never met a woman that was so independent and someone who knew exactly what she wanted to do and when and how. I had always hoped that people would take with them another aspect of Ms. O'Keefe's life. They see her in books, they see her in magazines, they see her in these portraits that people take of her where she's so austere and, and serious looking and, and that really wasn't all who she was. She liked to laugh, she liked a good joke. I want people to, to leave knowing the genius that she was, but that she was also human. She, you know, she had her likes and her dislikes like we all do. And people have, that have come to the house have said, I understand her so much better. I understand her work so much better because it's right there. My name is uh, Margarito Lopez and uh, they, everybody calls me Maggie. I am uh, Esteban Suazo's grandson and he was Ms. O'Keefe's gardener before and now I'm the gardener and I've been here since I was real young. I was 17 when I started. She used to take her walks in the parking lot a lot, and she would never get tired. She just kept walking. And uh, she would sit us down in front of her fireplace, especially in the winter. Uh, she, first thing she'd say, are you, are you feeling okay? Uh, are you cold? And you'll say no. And she'll say, well, as long as your back's warm, you'll be okay. So come inside and she'll sit us in front of the fire so we could get warm before we go out and start working. <laughs> but she was pretty neat. She was, she was fun. She, she had a sense of humor. My name's uh, Belarmino Lopez. They call me Mino for short. That's what Ms. O'Keefe used to call me too. And I've been here since 1973. Uh, she wanted me to work in the garden, helping my, our grandfather to uh, do gardening. That's how I first started. And then uh, after a while that I did some maintenance work, uh, started doing some mud floors, you know, multitasker, like she used to call us. <laughs> well, she would come out and, and walk the paths, you know, and she would see what was growing. She would like it. She really enjoyed being out here in the garden. When Every time I saw her, she was with a smile. Abby Q was her winter home. One winter that I remember, she was so disappointed that it was snowing and he had snowed about maybe a foot and a half. And she hasn't had her walk. 
So my brothers and I, uh, we decided to make a path all along the driveway, all around the driveway so she could take her, path, her walk. And she really, really enjoyed that. You know, she was real happy that she was able to take her walk in the winter. 